Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm starting a new video series that I'm calling Linguistics 101. And this is a series that I'm really excited about because linguistics is something that I'm really interested in and really passionate about. And it's something that not a whole lot of people have a good understanding about. But it is an area that will really help your language learning if you start to understand the basic concepts of linguistics. Now, this first video in the series is just going to be a basic overview introduction of linguistics in general. And then in subsequent videos, I'll start to get more specific into the, some of the uh, more specific sub-areas of linguistics. Um, this is something that several of you have been asking me about. Uh, you've been asking for a video that explains some basic linguistic principles for everyday people. And that's what I'm going to try to do with this series. Uh, most of you know, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that I am a student of linguistics at uh, University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Um, and so I'm really excited about this series because I think it's going to help you learn a lot. Um, now, before we can get started, uh, we have to talk about what is linguistics. Linguistics is the scientific study of human language. Uh, and we study how, what is language, what makes it up, what makes one language different from another language, uh, how does it work, what are the component parts behind the logic um, that you don't normally think about when you're speaking, um, but it's in there in your brain. Uh, a lot of things that you just say naturally and you can't explain why you say things that way um, these are the things that linguists study. And importantly, linguists also study how we can better use language for our purposes. Because language is something that exists in all domains of human existence. Um, if you are human, you have language and you use it every day and you use it in everything that you do. So uh, learning how to better use language and how to better understand language is going to be a huge benefit to everything you do. And first I'm going to do videos on the various branches of linguistics. And so I'm going to make a separate video for each one of these subfields and maybe even more. Starting with phonetics, which is the study of human speech sounds. Now phonetics study is what you do with your tongue, your mouth, your lips, and your lungs in order to produce speech sounds. It also studies uh, the properties of how those speech sounds travel through the air via sound waves. Phonology is the study of how speech sounds are used within a given language. Uh, you could say it's the grammar of speech sounds. Morphology is the study of words and how words are formed using various root words, prefixes, suffixes, how they all relate to one another. Um, and how they, to some extent, how they're used in sentences. Syntax is the study of sentence structure and how words are arranged within a sentence to mean different things. Semantics is the study of meaning. So why do our words mean what they mean? Pragmatics is the study of how humans use context to understand speech, um, which is very important if you're learning a foreign language especially if it's from a very different culture from your own, um, you're going to need to rely on context a lot. And there's a scientific study about how that's done. Linguistic descriptivism. <clears throat> All right, we can't start a series on linguistics without talking about prescriptivism versus descriptivism. Linguists are descriptivists, meaning that they're only worried about describing the way human speech actually occurs uh, and the underlying form of that language uh, that we have subconsciously in our brains. <clears throat> um, this contrasts with prescriptivism, um, which uh, you probably know all kinds of people that are prescriptivists. Um, and they try to tell you that there is a right and a wrong way to speak. You should try to speak in the right way, and you should avoid speaking in the wrong way. So they're prescribing a certain way of speaking. Um, and the more you think about this, the more you study it, the more you realize that prescriptivism just does not make sense. 
Um, so linguists are descriptivists. We're only worried about describing language in the way that it actually exists. Um, and a common uh, thought experiment in linguistics is the Martian. Okay, If a Martian scientist came down to Earth and heard the following two sentences spoken by a native speaker, which one would he consider to be an error? And this is assuming that the Martian is a good scientist and he's done a lot of observation of English and he has written down the rules that define the English language. So he hears one person say, I ain't never done that before. <clears throat> uh, meaning, of course, I have never done that. Then the Martian hears someone else say, do you want a butter waddle? Intending to mean, do you want a water bottle? And the reason that I wrote this down here is because I actually had a friend say that to me one time. She was asking me if I wanted a water bottle, and it just came out all wrong. Do you want a bottle? Blah, 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 blah. You want a bottle? Well. All right. So which of these two sentences would the Martian consider to be an error? Uh, the answer is number two. Uh, number sentence one is perfectly grammatical. It's the Martian would listen to that, and he would say, "I hear people say that all the time." This is fine. This is just the way these humans speak. And there's nothing wrong with that sentence. It's perfectly formed. Um, he would say sentence number two is clearly an error, right? Uh, she meant to say one thing and she accidentally said something else. The first guy, he said that on purpose. He said exactly what he meant to say. It's not an error. So there is a grammatical and there is a non-grammatical. Um, but grammatical sentence simply means uh, a sentence that would be spoken naturally by a native speaker. Um, and since native speakers say things like, I ain't never done that, uh, that's a grammatical sentence. Because native speakers don't purposely say things like, do you want a butter waddle? Not a grammatical sentence. So that's the difference. <clears throat> Before we talk about uh, studying language, we have to do a little bit of thinking about what language is. And it's important to keep in mind that language is different from literacy. Okay? All mentally healthy, healthy people develop language as long as they're exposed to it. <clears throat> um, children develop language before they're able to read and write. So there's a period of time where every one of us was able to speak, but we were not literate. Okay? They're separate. Uh, tribes living in the jungle with no dictionaries, no writing, no pens, no paper, they're able to speak and they spend their entire lives able to speak but not able to write. So writing systems, spelling, dictionaries, grammar books, these are not important to a language. Um, they have some relation, some connection, but they're separate and you have to keep them separate because uh, this tribe that lives in the jungle, they speak rule-bound grammar. There are, there are rules to the language that they speak. Those rules were just never taught in an English class. They acquired them naturally. <clears throat> what is language? Continued. All right. Language behaves in ways that literacy does not. No one naturally acquires literacy. You have to go to school to learn how to read and write, and it takes years of practice, and you have to do exercises, and you have to first learn to write your letters, and then learn to write simple words and you have to take spelling tests if you uh, are you know if you belong to a uh, if you speak a language that is not spelt the way it's pronounced sorry I, my computer's about to die I gotta plug this in really quick <clears throat> <sighs> literacy is not naturally acquired language is so if a, a mentally healthy child is exposed to language, he doesn't have, you don't have to try to teach him that language. On the contrary, there's nothing you can do to prevent him from learning that language. <clears throat> um, language evolves much faster than writing. So take the word knight, for example, as in the knights of the round table. Once upon a time, this word was pronounced as knicht. Um, and it, the people who devised the writing system for the English language, um, they this is how they pronounced the word. They listened to the way that they pronounced the words, and then they wrote down exactly the way that they thought it should be spelt. Um, so 
the word for them, knicht, began with a K and it had a G and an H in it. Fast forward several hundred years, like I said, language is always changing and there's nothing that can be done to stop it. <clears throat> well, the pronunciation of the word knicht transform into night. Um, and the writing system, because it's easier to preserve writing than it is to preserve sound waves, the writing system stayed the same. <clears throat> um, which is an example of the way that language evolves, leaving behind the writing. And that's why we have so many weird spellings in our language these days, because um, we, you know, they, they codified the spelling and then we left that behind as the language evolved, but the spelling didn't. All right, literate, literary, literary, uh, literate societies are more prone to prescriptivism. That's because, um, you know, in the West where we, we go to school and learn how to spell and we learn proper grammar and we take English classes, um, it's just almost inevitable that we would grow up believing that there is a right and a wrong way to speak and that you should avoid the wrong way. Well, if you grew up in a desert island where you never saw a pencil, pencil on paper, you never saw a grammar book, you never saw a dictionary, and all you did is you just learn the language the way your parents speak, then you would have no concept that your, your parents speak wrong, even, right? Even if they use words like ain't, or if, they end, if your parents end their sentences with prepositions, right? Um, and it's just, you would realize that it's just not important. You probably wouldn't even realize it. You would just never think about it. Why would there be a right or wrong way to speak? Um, so uh, in some ways, these illiterate societies are, are have a more highly evolved concept of language than we do because we have our language so closely tied to literacy. Reading and writing or literacy are not studied by linguists. Um, they're interesting from you know, uh, from historical and psychological points of view. <clears throat> uh, but linguists don't study those because they are not language. Linguists study language, and that is the natural language that develops in humans. We already talked about how uh, writing does not naturally occur in human societies. <clears throat> All right, now and a very important thing that you have to know when studying linguistics is that Spelling is important for literacy. It is not important for language. You don't need to know how to spell to have a language. Um, and spelling is not a naturally occurring phenomenon in language speakers. Linguists don't study orthography, which is writing systems. So in English, we have an alphabet with one sound, roughly speaking, one sound, one sound per letter. In Chinese, they have logographs, which is one symbol per word. In other languages, they, they have, uh, they have uh, syllable alphabets where there's uh, one symbol per syllable that could be pronounced in that language. Um, and linguists are not interested in this. They're interesting, right? But that's not what linguists study. Um, linguists study spoken language and sign languages because these two types of language uh, are naturally occurring and they share a lot of properties in common. Um, but writing symbols, written letters on a piece of paper, um, th this is not an aspect of human language, so linguists do not study it. <clears throat> now, there's a few um, properties of language that I want to talk about uh, before we go any further. Um, we already talked about how language is rule-bound. I, I, I probably should have included that on this slide. <clears throat> All human language is rule-bound, okay? So um, if you break one of the rules that your English teacher taught you in English class, um, it doesn't mean that your language is breaking rules. What it means is that the rules of your language are actually different than what your English teacher taught you. Um, but your language is still rule bound. I ain't never done that before is a grammatical sentence in some dialects of English, including my own. Um, and it follows rules. There are rules that, that tell you how that sentence has to be formed, right? Because 
um, it, it would be an ungrammatical utterance to say, I ain't that never done before, um, because that violates a rule of word order in that dialect in my dialect of English. <clears throat> um, sorry for going off on a tangent here. Um, but all language is rule bound. If you're a human who develops a language, uh, your language is bound by rules, regardless of whether you've ever taken a class, read a dictionary, read a grammar book. Um, this is a naturally occurring phenomenon in language. Also, language is productive or creative, meaning that you can say and understand utterances that you've never heard before. Um, for example, my great aunt Helga and her secretary Edith got sunburnt while riding their hovercrafts through Boston. You've never heard this sentence before, but you understand what it means. Okay, so you didn't have to learn the meaning of this sentence in order to understand it. I have never heard this sentence before, but I was able to write it and speak it because I understand the way that the language works. Now, we did have to individually memorize each word in this sentence and the meaning of each of these words um, and then compile the sentence using the rules of our grammar. <clears throat> um, so really the whole point of this is just to show you that uh, you can understand sentences that you've never heard before. Language is arbitrary. There is no connection between the symbol and the meaning. Okay, the symbol being either the spoken word the hand signals, uh, or in the case of orthography, the written marks that you would make on the paper, aka the letters or the logographs. <clears throat> These are all symbols, okay? Um, and by themselves, they mean, they mean nothing, okay? You need a language for that symbol to be in before it means something. And what the language does is it assigns a meaning to the symbol. So for example, the English word dog, <clears throat> the those combinations of, of sound waves mean nothing by themselves and they have absolutely no relationship to the furry animal that we all love. Um, that word could have just as easily been perro or chien or hunden or blah 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 or anything else um, but for whatever reason we didn't choose any of those words we chose the word dog. Um, there's not a reason we just chose it. It's arbitrary. Um, similarly, uh, we could have chosen the word fish to refer to the uh, four-legged furry animal who is man's best friend, uh, but we didn't. We chose the word fish to represent uh, a slimy, scaly animal that swims in the rivers, and you catch it uh, if you have a license. <clears throat> um, so, so it's arbitrary. I guess that's all I have to say about that. Um, that there's no there's no natural logical connection between the symbol itself and the meaning. Um, and that's all I have for this video. Um, like I said, I'm really excited for this series because linguistics is fascinating to me and I think it has a huge potential to help you with learning language. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section below. Uh, ask me a question on Twitter. If you have any suggestions for videos that you would like to see related to linguistics, please feel free to let me know. And I'm really excited to move on to the next video in the series. So thanks for watching this one, and we'll see you guys next time.